All right, welcome back everyone. So, um, this is just a quick follow-up on the invisible glass ceramic coating uh, for your for the glass. Uh, you know, I, I went for the application. So I did the application video, which you guys saw. And then I washed it uh, like two weeks and a couple days after because I went on business travel. So the car, so the car sat in the garage for. Um, like a day and a half then I pulled it back outside and it, it sat outside for a couple of weeks you know it got some rain like I said I was on business travel for one week um, and then it got some some rain when I got back and then uh, it rained again and so then I washed it at, like, after the two week and two day time frame and I saw that on the glass uh, this was no noticeable on the side glass here where I put it and especially on the front glass where it's just started to just be like a real slow sheet uh, thing on there you know it looked like it was trying to bead it just wasn't very effective in doing so and um, rather than putting up a video stating hey, you know this product is is not good or coming off as not being good or things of that nature I wanted to give it a second shot and so I ended up polishing up the glass again this time I used the McKees let me move this chair uh, I used the McKees 37 uh, restore polish with a buff and shine maroon pad last night so it's caked on and then I used the um, flex px 80 and I polished the front glass uh, this pad I only use for the front glass I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the side glass in a minute here uh, later but I did the um, like six section passes with it just to remove everything that was on there basically you're gonna work the polish till it becomes um, clear and I uh, ended up dividing the, the glass with a tape line, which I'll show you. So there's my tape line right down the center. And so I'm going to test out um, the invisible glass coating. And I'm going to compare it to the Art to Shine graphene window coat because I know how this is supposed to perform. Uh, I could do the PNS view as well if I wanted to, but I'm going to uh, do another fresh video for the um, graphene window coat because I do want to post some final thoughts on this, this product. And I'm working on getting a discount code for for you guys um so i'm trying to see if i can get a 10 percent discount code i reached out to the representative from um, art to shine if you can hook that up but uh, as far as the invisible glass as i mentioned it was a slow sheet didn't bead very well and so then i was like hmm was there something wrong in my prep or application and i had used the glass stripper which i don't have here uh, on the front glass this time i used the mckee's but I did the glass stripper by hand, so I may not have removed whatever was there um, by hand versus the machine with the cutting pad. And so this time I'm using that, and I did um, two panel wipes with the uh, Meguiar's Surface Prep. But I want to um, thank Brett Summers, who is a representative for Invisible Glass. He reached out to me uh, as he watched the first application video, and... Uh, I'll kind of just give you some highlights here of what um, we're having our conversation. So he says, thanks for doing the video. He says, I watched it this morning. Thank you for your feedback on the coating and on glass stripper. I know our box says to rinse off the glass stripper, but I found a damp microfiber or multiple. If you are doing several windows, works well to remove it. Sometimes I follow up with another pass of visible glass as it leaves nothing behind after it evaporates. So he says, I pass up uh, along my feedback. What I forgot to mention is... I had used uh, the spray bottle that just has water, sprayed it on the glass, and I also had a damp microfiber towel when I was removing the glass stripper. Then I came back with a um, another towel to wipe out the residue, and then I came back with Optimum Paint Prep as a panel wipe on there. I just didn't show all that stuff on there because I was just trying the glass stripper, and I, I, it was just for me it wasn't as user friendly as the McKees in terms of wipe off. The benefit to to the glass strippers it can be removed with water so if you get some on your trim just hit it with some water and it'll, it will come off um so then he goes on he says that they're, they're a small less than 100 employee company that they've been in the car business for almost 80 years he says their ceramic glass coating is mixed in-house at the manufacturing facility in quarryville pennsylvania so they have three phd chemists in-house on their r d team and uh, he says he hasn't had another chance to get another video up it's in the works uh, but he said he does all the videos for Invisible Glass and Stoner Car Care Brands. So he said he has has a lot of uh, projects uh, to to do right now. Uh, I then asked him about the 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 guidebook. Uh, you know this guidebook here. 
uh, states that the coating has to be used within 14 days um, of it here. I forget where it was at in here. Uh, but somewhere in here it mentioned the 14 day and it was in that video I was reading on it. And so I asked them, you know, how, how, um, is that really a true statement or, you know, if the bottle is sealed, uh, properly, can it last longer? And he basically says, yeah, if it's tightly sealed and stored out of the sun, uh, you can actually have the bottle last a long time. And he says that the bottle in this guidebook, which who knows when they generate this guidebook, he still has it and the coating in there is still usable. So... Uh, that's something to keep in mind that um, you can do that on there. So I'm trying to see if I can find it. I can't find it in here. Oh, here it is. Bottle is best used within 14 days. So uh, that's a good thing uh, that he pointed that out to me. Uh, so again, if you store it out of um, sunlight and tightly seal the bottle, you'll be perfectly fine. Um, so then, I went, as I mentioned, as I had my water behavior issues with the coating, I asked him, uh, you know, how hydrophobic is this coating supposed to be? Because I'm noticing that it's just sheeting on it. So he reached out to his R&D person and then uh, his response from the guy named John, which is the guy demoing in the, in the video. He says, the coating should be fairly hydrophobic. It will not have the same performance as a pure rain repellent treatment. However, it is definitely more beads than sheets. A few things might be causing what Mike has seen. If the coating was not cured properly, it could make some surface performance issues. But as long as I had a few hours to dry, it should be fine. Now, in the book, it says to allow it to dry for two to four hours. Uh, which, it's in the garage for a couple days. It says, typically, it says, my guess is that it is the car wash that was used, which and I use Gloss Job Clarify, which, again, is like Car Pro Reset, which leaves nothing behind. It says, typically, people detail a car, and then the next time they wish, they wash it, they want to see crazy bees and are sometimes disappointed. Car wash detergents generally break the surface tension on the vehicle and make it look like it's all sheeting. I would guess with the rain, if it rains later this week, or he just sprays it with a hose, it will look a lot more hydrophobic. So uh, it did rain after I had washed it, and it wasn't as hydrophobic either uh, in that regard. So it just hasn't really been uh, hydrophobic. So rather than question my um, application or prep, I'm redoing it again. And so I'm going to prep this glass again. I'm going to reapply this. I'm just going to use a suede block because I don't I want to take out one of those other applicators. And like I said, maybe I didn't put enough on there last time. Actually, let me, uh, I'm thinking about using a coating saver sheet and just cutting it into a small piece, which I think I might do. Uh, I tend to look like that better than the suede. Uh, we'll try the suede block. So we'll use the suede block and we'll see if we can get a nice uh, consistent layer on there. Like I said, I'm going to split the glass in half. And then we'll go from there. So I wasn't going to show you the application, but why not? I'm already here. I have you on, on the camera here. So I'm going to prime this applicator with plenty of product because I want this to glide smooth on the glass. That's probably way more than what you need. But again, we're just testing the product. I'll wait for that airplane to pass by. Okay, so I'm just going to start uh, here. So I'm going to just spread it on here and I'll put a nice thick layer. And I think uh, part of it last time is I topped it uh, prior to the um, recommended time frame. You know, instead of waiting the two to four hour window, I actually applied it within an hour. And so I'm thinking maybe that application uh, was um, just too too short at that time and so we're going to just go ahead and let this set up and it's starting to rainbow already so when I'm pretty thick I'm going to go ahead and put some more in and do the other half I should have had my coating caddy out I'll get it out in a, in a second so if you guys are looking for that coating caddy man just go ahead and uh, pick one up uh, they're really taking off and Miranda Detailing just did a uh, video of a giveaway uh, on it and so that person who was the lucky winner congratulations to him 
He's got himself a fantastic product. And because I can't really get these wiper blades to stay up, that's kind of a... pain to work with. So we'll just do a couple more passes here and it's really rainbowing really good today. And I plied it on much thicker than last time. Let me take it off the suede block. And I never put um, coating on the on the blades. So we're gonna let that set up here for a bit. Make sure that's tight. And we'll just monitor it and make sure that it's getting tight right here. It looks a little thin. Okay, that's set up. I'm gonna time it. Uh, last time I uh, waited uh, five minutes. So I'll just time it and kind of just see. So we'll let this rainbow kind of dissipate a bit and then I'll wipe it down. But you can see that it's really rainbowing today. Last time it didn't rainbow as much. And so I'm wondering, like I said, I'm wondering if I had application issues. Uh, maybe the temperature and humidity got me last time. I really don't know. Uh, it's a lot warmer today. But like I said, who knows? Okay, so I'm going to be getting a Car Pro. These are those, um, I don't really call these things. I forget their light versions of their coating towels. Yeah, so it's still pretty wet. We'll just let that sit. We'll let the rainbow kind of dissipate. Down here, you can see where I applied it heavier. The rainbow, you know, of course, it's thicker there. So all these areas here would turn into high spots if I didn't wipe it. So we'll just let that sit. Here I didn't put as much, so... I think probably a second layer will do it justice. So I know it's kind of boring, it's like, you know, watching paint dry, but I want to give you guys a real representation of what it's like when you're applying a coating. Like I could actually done the entire glass and then come back and do this one. So it's been a minute and a half here, actually a little, a little bit longer. And it's um, still rather rather wet so we'll let this set up even longer like I said last time I let it sit up for five minutes and I think I'm gonna let that sit for close to five minutes um, like I said I normally just touch it here and if it still seems wet um, you know like these areas here can be wiped off already so we'll let it sit for another minute I'm gonna just make sure it's yeah we'll let it sit for another couple minutes So it's got a real long working time, which is really nice. I think on the glass side glass here, because uh, I'm going to redo it here, because I wasn't too happy with the fly by forte there. Because I think I don't think I that side I got it 100% correct. This side I didn't get it correct, so it wasn't beating and sheeting as bad as good as that side. So I'm just going to go ahead and polish this out, and then I think I'm just going to use the paint coating on the side here. I think I'm just going to use the Adams Advanced Graphene coating and try that as a and see how it holds up. So like I said, from the other side, we're going to do the Art to Shine Nano Graphene Window Coat. I'm not going to do it now. I'm going to do it in a separate video. But I'm going to shake it and get it ready. Because all the graphene sticks to the bottom. You can see it on the bottom here. There we go. It's almost mixed in there. Okay, so at this point it's been 3 minutes and 20 seconds here, and is it ready to be wiped off? Yes. So uh, 3.30 was the ticket, and the reason I can tell is because it's starting to tack up on the, on the thinner areas, so um, we'll just level this out. 
Yeah. Got it just right. Of course, the heavier areas will take forever to to level out. Okay, so I, I flipped this towel over, and so now I'm going to flip it to this side, and we're just going to buff off the rest of it. But I'm going to tell you that this coating is not slick. Like I said, it feels like I um, I have just plain uncoated glass, and so that's one of the comments I provided to um, to Brett. And it's like you know. I'm used to wiping off a coating that's a lot slicker. Rather than something that, that you know feels like I didn't put anything on the glass. I mean you can tell you put something on the glass because it you know uncoated glass feels really really tacky. All right, so we're just gonna let that set up. Again, this is gonna be a follow-up to the first wash. I know it's, it's. you guys are probably, some of you are probably asking what's going on with the coating, and I had a setback, and so rather than questioning all of my application issues with it, I was like, let me just try again. Okay, so that's it. I'm just kind of looking to see if I have any that went over the tape line and that's it so uh, we'll report back on the um, performance of it I will do two layers of it so I'll wait four hours what time is it now so it's 1230 I'll come back and put a second layer in, in four hours I'll wait that maximum window put a second layer and then um, we'll see what we're left with in terms of water behavior for the first wash and you know report I'll kind of bring you along and show you how it works how it how the hydrophobics compare to another coating that um, I've used and have no issues with so again thanks for watching this is just a quick follow-up uh, actually I will post the water behavior after this application video so it will be a longer video you guys can skip ahead if you guys don't want to watch this application uh, go ahead and skip the application part and get straight to the water behavior part. All right. So again, thanks for watching. So next thing I want to do is I'm going to do initial rinse, but I want to show the initial rinse of the invisible glass coating here. And so that's what you get with the invisible glass versus the art to shine one. Uh, you're not going to get that real heavy type beating that you're going to get. But you get the slow sheeting type on there. I personally don't like it, but uh, I'm going to leave it up to personal preference. Uh, if you don't like that, then I recommend sticking with like the art to shine or the uh, PNS view, something like that. Um, but if you try to mimic beads from rain, you know, it will still bead, uh, but if you flood it, that's what you're going to get. But you can see it leaves a lot less water on that side once it fully sheets, and so your glass will stay cleaner uh, in the sense of when it's the car's wet from a rainstorm. So I just want to kind of just point that out, but we're going to go ahead and wash it and see how this if it does change because it is dirty but I just want to give you an idea of what the water behavior is of the invisible glass ceramic coating I've applied this twice already and the results are consistent so I know it's not uh, my application issues it's actually that's the way that the coatings uh, performing uh, from itself so again I personally don't like that it doesn't mean it's not a bad thing I'm gonna leave it up to you to decide if you want to uh, pick that up and, and, and try it out uh, all right so thanks for watching just finish rinsing out the car and one thing about that uh, hot shot shampoo is it leaves a lot of residue behind it. It takes a while to rinse off, but uh, just a one, one last shot post-wash post, uh, of the 
glass coatings. So you can see that the visible glass one is just a real slow sheeter. But again, all the water that sheets off is gonna leave a much cleaner surface and the fact that there's no water left behind. Unlike the Art to Shine one over here, which when I flood it, there's still some trace water. left behind let that sheet off for a second so again if you guys like that stuff that style uh, water behavior again uh, then pick up the invisible glass one it's gonna leave you less water on the surface um, and then if you do rain uh, they're both gonna bead but the art to shine one giving you tighter beads So I can adjust this. So that's what you're gonna get from both glass coatings. And again, this hope this kind of helps in understanding uh, the difference in the technology that goes into both of these. Uh, you want sheeting style or you want a real heavy type beat, uh, fast beating and fast sheeting. And you go with the art to shine, which again, that'll sheet really well after you flood it. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and just dry this car off and then um, I'll show you the drying aid portion of which I'm going to use uh, today.